One of the most interesting subplots of this whole world is the talent wars. A cool idea is that as these things get better, maybe we begin to automate some of the research function that people formerly would have played. Do you see a world where like we're squeezing down the fewer and fewer number of people that really matter that will have all the impact on where we go in terms of like net new research? And that means that all this crazy spending that's happening at Meta or elsewhere makes a lot of sense that like maybe even those numbers should be higher or something like this. I think it's like tremendously hilarious that people are like, oh my God, this person's getting paid a billion dollars. It is infeasible. It's like, how could this person possibly be worth that much? Well, they're running the experiments on chips that cost, you know, a hundred billion dollars. <laughs> if every wasted experiment they do, if they just used like a third of the compute and, and their ideas and their impact on it, wasted the compute, it was an idea that was already done or like, you know, like it, it, there's so much wasted compute. I'll say, I call it wasted. It's trying stuff and failing, but like, None of us know what to try and what not to try. And these things are so complicated. There's like a group of people just trying different stuff on the existing data. How do you mix it? What order do you feed it into the model? Um, how do you filter it? Like what's the architecture? There's different people working on long context. There's different people working on every single aspect of the model that like if you just make them a little bit more efficient that they come up with the idea that's 5% more efficient. Well, fantastic. I just saved not only 5% of my compute time, training time, I also saved 5% across my entire inference fleet. And then, I do it again and again and again and again because we're so far away from like these models being anywhere near as efficient as a human brain. And we know it can at least get as efficient as us. Maybe the compute substrate isn't the same, but like whatever, right? Adding more people to the problem doesn't make it faster. Because there's so many things you're trying, you run these experiments, you learn something, and then you implement it. You tweak the knobs in these ways, in a hundred different ways, and then you see the trend line and you're like, oh, so actually I should tweak it this way. Let's implement that, right? There's so much like gut feel, there's so much like reading data, understanding, re-implementing re it into these doing things that stuff. if you add people, you're gonna slow it down. In a sense, a lot of like Meta's problems before they did the super intelligence thing was that they just had too many people that weren't led by leadership, that was amazing. Um, and they had like a lot of failed experiments and wasted time doing things that didn't matter. There's a tweet from one of my friends uh, at OpenAI. Um, he's pretty famous on Twitter, his name's Rune. He's like, I get visibly, viscerally angry every time I think about how many H100s Meta's wasting. Hmm. It's such a funny tweet because it's like, well, yeah, they're wasting a ton of compute. They were, you know, maybe they still are, but you know, like, and everyone's wasting compute, right? OpenAI's wasting tons of compute. Because you know, what's the Pareto optimal model architecture? Yeah. Who knows? Another thing I saw Rune say recently, which was so interesting, was uh, why don't we just go make even more ridiculous offers around the people that have process knowledge for things that we want here in the U.S. in other countries? Like, why don't we, if, if we're getting pretty good at the Arizona, you know, fab that we've built, and we, we think that we can sort of extract the process knowledge from the people, why don't we like go aqua hire like all the best people in Shenzhen or all the best people in like other places in the world? Do you think it starts to escalate to that level? Like so much is dependent on the process knowledge of a relatively small group of people and the, and the war, the talent war should actually be, it shouldn't be meta and open AI. It should be like the US, maybe through meta and open AI and like people from all over the world. Like do you think it starts to get that extreme and, and should it? That's almost a function of why like Intel has, has fallen off a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Is like, um, you have all these geniuses and you know, you know, nanochemistry and PhDs and all these like random like you know like things, whether it be chemistry, physics, all these like incredibly smart people. But there's a whole class of incredibly smart people that never went that way because they're like, oh, those guys are making like 200k. Like, why would I do that? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to Google and make 800k. And now I'm gonna go to OpenAI and make 10 mil. Or now I'm gonna go to Meta and go make 100 million. Right? Like any like smart 18 year old is gonna be like. Fuck that, I'm doing this, <laughs> yeah. right? Why do the smartest doctors, and I don't mean to say the smartest doctors in a general sense, but there skews a really smart population of doctors that wanna be dermatologists and anesthesiologists. Yeah, it's right. like, is that the most valuable thing for them to do? No, but those are the two professions that give you like good working hours and great Lots pay. Of pay yeah. Not to say that you know the general doctor is not smart as them, but if you took the population of general like family doctors, like just the random doctor, and you took the population of dermatologists, the newest coming out of school, the ones that are being dermatologists and anesthesiologists are way smarter, or at least were scored better, were able to get into the field that was coveted. And so, yeah, talent wars, like, it, it is truly, like, you know, we've sort of been through this process of, like, capital has, you know, it's, it's always been human, human capital and, and capital goods, sort of those two vying off of each other. And for a long time with mechanization, industrialization, we had, the human capital decreasing as the industrial capital increased. Um, and sort of 
that got to a point where, especially in the 70s, it really started to tank as the ability to globalize and, and all these things started to really hit the US. And, and that's why we have all, a lot of the like, population level dynamics and income inequality that we have today that like, is very bad for the psyche of the US and, and the sti stability of it. But then you, have now, you now have, like we're in such a age of like, well, actually, like manufacturing things is pretty commodity. Like Most of the value doesn't come from the manufacturing of it. It comes from the creation of the idea. One thing Jensen told me, which I thought was like amazing, right? He's like, you know, Dylan, he's like, the reason America is rich, like people have it all wrong. The reason we're rich is because we've exported all the labor, but we've kept all the value. Mm. And that's what NVIDIA does, right? They've exported the labor of making Apple their chips. Too. And Apple, right? Everyone. It's, it's done in Asia. Yeah. Um, and those, co those companies make money. Not as much money as NVIDIA and Apple. Right. All the gross profits are going to them. Um, and then they're either reinvesting it or buying back stock or whatever. However, they allocate the capital is like, you know, yeah. different concern. If, like, as you said, the process knowledge is so valuable, why aren't we, why aren't we doing this? That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great idea. Rune's idea, not mine. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think the challenge is how to choose people is really difficult. So for some roles, someone who can talk the talk, they're great, right? Like people just automatically assume they're great because they can talk the talk. But you know how many people suck at talking and are really freaking good? At doing, yeah. Yeah, but then you don't know. You don't know, right? Because it's like, well, they, but then there's people who talk about being able to do better than the person who's doing and like, and then like, you know, these tests are never as good, right? Like, so work trials, it's like, how do you select? Um, and this was a big challenge for Meta. Um, so some of the criticisms are like, they didn't get all of the best people. They actually got a lot of like bad people. It's like the cope from like OpenAI and Anthropic and you know, these kinds of companies are like, yep, no, no, yep, no, they didn't yep. get our best people. That's what Sam said, right? He's like, they didn't get our best people, it's okay. Meanwhile, he did have to do counter offers internally, right? right. So it's like, you know, um, so, so as far as the process knowledge, I think, I think the ML researchers are an extreme of how much value one can do. But my favorite analogy that I came up with recently is that ML research is the exact same as semiconductor manufacturing. You know, there's a ton of jobs in, in, in semiconductor manufacturing that don't exist in ML research, but it is a ton of tune a thousand different knobs, mm. right? Oh, you put the wafer in this tool, you're gonna change the pressure of the chamber when you're doing the deposition. Oh, you're gonna change the mix of the chemicals flowing in, which chemicals you're putting in, right? Like, what, what speed you do it at? Do you do it for 30 minutes? Do you do it for 31 minutes? Do you do it for, you know, obviously it splices way down. There's yeah. so many knobs on every single tool and you have a thousand input plus and process knobs, <laughs> right? Process knobs on each tool. Plus, it's like the sequence of them all. Yeah, yeah. And and so like you frankly cannot test everything, right? It's impossible. It's it's too large of a search space. Just like just like designing a chip is too large of a search space. You have a hundred trillion transistors. How are you gonna possibly try every single thing? Impossible, right? Yeah. You just have to have enough intuition. Like pick that point, pick that point, pick that point. See the data. Oh, okay. I think the answer is here, right? And then just YOLO, right? Um, and, and, you know, obviously once you, know, you think the answer is here, you test here, and you're like, okay, here. But like, a different person might have seen these three and then said, okay, the answer is actually here, not here. And like, the data is like fuzzy. It's like somewhere in the center. But like, you know, it's like this, this whole like idea of like ML research is you spend a lot of time on compute training doing what effectively were useless things besides teaching yourself what's the right thing to do and what's the wrong thing to do. Yeah. And, and semiconductor manufacturing is the same way. And actually all process manufacturing is the same way if you're iterating super fast and you're trying to get better and better and better or you're optimizing a process on a chemistry or whatever it is, you, you try, you fail, you learn, you do. In semiconductor manufacturing, maybe it's just running tens of thousands of wafers and so your R&D cost of, you know, an, of an Intel and, and, or, or your, your cost of your you know, main fab that is running the R&D is very, very high and it's producing zero economic value besides that it's teaching you how to do the next node, which then you can deploy at volume and that is like, like what actually makes the money.